everybody, welcome or welcome back to Daylights. My name is Nirin and in today's video, I will be going through what I made in 2023. I wasn't planning to do a full video on it in the first place because I feel like I didn't make a lot last year but because my reel kind of blew up or at least it got more views than I normally would have I decided to make a full video going through everything that I made and giving you like a bit of background information on some of the pieces I know it's already almost the end of the first month of 2024 but better late than never, right? I really like what I made this year I think I was more intentional with the things that I made and I prioritized making it something that I would wear in the future rather than just cranking out as many pieces as I could for the year. Also that reel kind of sparked a lot of new people to find my channel and watch my videos. So hi, if you're new to this channel, I make fiber arts content. Sometimes I also make content on books and I haven't made a video in quite a long time because we were moving houses. There were a few clips from that house. Um, I think you can see that in the test thing, the mini mesh vest. So yeah, we don't have that house anymore and we are moving here permanently and so we were packing a lot and that's why I was busy for the whole month of December and I couldn't get to posting any videos for you so I am terribly sorry about that but I'm happy that a lot of new people found me so welcome to the channel. If you missed it, I did make a half year roundup in I think like June or July of 2023 so some of the pieces that I mentioned there will also be here just to like give you a heads up if you've seen some of these pieces before Okay, so I'm gonna go in somewhat chronological order and the first thing that I made, um, I finished this in January is the OLED cardigan So this was a test knit from Bronwyn Her username is Bwin Makes. She actually just started a YouTube, so yeah. This pattern is by her. I test knitted this for her in like December and then I finished it in January. I held three strands of the Moda Vera Daisy yarn and it gave this really pretty chunky look. As you can probably tell, it is starting to rip because I accidentally not accidentally, but I soaked this in water for about 30 minutes without reading the labels and on the labels, it said not to soak. So I think because of that, the fibers kind of weakened and then it just started ripping out of nowhere. So there's like a few tears here. I'm definitely gonna frog this one. I'm not sure if I can salvage the yarn because it's quite fragile now, but I don't know. We'll see what I can do with this when I frog this. And I also made it a little bit too oversized for me. I wanted it to be a bit bigger but I'm not sure what happened in my calculations but it ended up being ginormous on me. So yeah, I'm gonna frog this and we'll see what I can repurpose with this yarn. I really love the colors of this cardigan though. By the way, I will be linking all the patterns that I've used if there is a pattern down in the description box below. So if you'd like to make one for yourself, you can go ahead and check them out. Next up, I made this top for Harry Styles Love on Tour that happened back in March. That was the first concert that i ever been to and it was an experience to say the least. It was crazy hearing the songs that I listened to on my headphones at home live in person with the guy standing. Not right in front of me because he was like basically an ant but he was kind of like a hundred feet in front of me. But I found the shouting and the screaming from the fans to be a little bit overboard and insane. He could literally stand there and do nothing like that emoji and people would still be shouting and screaming. And I found it so frustrating especially during the talking segments when Harry was like trying to say something but people kept shouting and you can't really hear what he's trying to say which is so annoying because I'm not there for the shouting, I'm there for him. Anyway, it was pretty fun for like a first concert I guess. I haven't had much experience so I don't know what it's supposed to feel like but I guess it was fun. How do I skip this? This is my trouble song! And hearing Little Freak Life was everything to me. I wish it was fine line, but you know what? I'll take Little Freak as the next best option. I love that song. This is how the back looks like. I followed the motif of the Harry's House logo and I duplicate stitch this at the back. And then at the front, this design is actually inspired by one of the outfits, or a few of the outfits actually that he wore on Love on Tour. Please ignore the not weave thin loose ends. I am not going to weave those in because I'm going to frog this anyway and I did not have time to do it before the concert but I'm going to frog this anyway so it doesn't matter. Um, as I was saying, he wore like patterned t-shirts and there were like this design of hearts on it so I really wanted to emulate that and he also wore this jacket 
for his birthday show and a few other shows which had this colour change between the chest and the shoulder and I really wanted to emulate that as well. It was supposed to be a cardigan but I could not figure out the sleeve situation in time so I just opted out for a vest and the sides has eye caught edging along with the front. So next up we have another test knit and this is the Baguette by Tamara. I made this in April 2023 and this was the first bag I ever made. Before that I only made like small pouches but I've never done something that was a bag in a sense. But I really love the construction of this pattern. It's really simple to knit up and I also really like the extra details that went into this like the star duplicate stitching in the front. I also added this metal clasp and I lined the bag which is great but because this was my first sewing project it wasn't the best. So there are a few stitches that weren't seamed properly and I also added a cute little pocket at the back but I found this to not be very practical because my phone can't fit in here. But it's nice for like cards and small things like that. I love using this when I'm out on like quick trips because it fits my phone and my wallet in here nicely. Okay now we are in June and that is when I made my June vest because you know I made it in June. So you might have seen this one in my half year roundup but I mentioned that I hated the construction of that vest. That was the I Love Slipover by Drop Studio or Garn Design uh, by Drops Design and Garn Studio something like that but I did not like the construction of that vest so I totally scrapped that and I remade it following the methods that I like. So this one is knitted bottom up in the round and then the front and back is separated and worked flat with the neck shaping and the arm shaping and then I picked up stitches for the neckline and the armholes. I'm thinking of adding a bottom ribbing to this as well because I don't like the way that it kind of rolls at the bottom. So I'm not sure when I'm going to do that but that is on my to-do list for 2024. I made this using a Moda Vera Daisy yarn held together with Moda Vera Reflections yarn. Oh my bad. This was Moda Vera Reflections. Moda Vera Daisy is the shiny part. So yeah, I held this double and I really like how it turned out. I actually filmed a tutorial for this on like how to make it but it was only in one size and I wanted to be more size inclusive so I tried grading the pattern but it was literally a nightmare. Math is not my forte so I'm not sure if that video will ever see the light of day but one thing's for certain is that I probably will never grade a pattern ever again just cause it's so confusing, so many numbers and it's just exhausting mentally. I think if I were to release a pattern for this, I would just get a tech editor to create a pattern for me. But I'm really happy with how this vest turned out. Just need to add some bottom ribbing and then it's complete. Also, please ignore all the loose ends from these projects. I don't think I weaved in most of the loose ends from here um, just because that is my least favourite part of the whole knitting process. In July, I picked up crochet and I made this crochet mesh rug. I followed a tutorial on YouTube. Her YouTube handle is Anna Green. To be honest, this is horrible. The sleeves aren't the same length for some reason, even though I did the same number of rows. The holes of the mesh stitches are not the same because I calculated it wrongly, so some holes are bigger than others. And it's also too cropped for me, which I don't really like. But other than the many things I hate about this, I think for a first crochet project, it's quite cute. Maybe if I practice crochet more, it would turn out a lot better. I was actually thinking of getting into crochet more, um, and I want to try reading written patterns instead of just sticking to video tutorials. But I find it so confusing when there's different languages of the crochet pattern, so I never know whether I am reading the American version or the UK version. And because I follow videos, I don't really need to know what are the names of the stitches that I'm doing or which country I'm following. When it's videos, it's a lot easier to like not have to think about what it's called and I just focus more on the movement. But when it comes to written patterns, I have to know which one I'm following. And I think that's when it starts to get a bit complicated. So yeah, I'm definitely open to making more crochet projects with the help of YouTube tutorials but I'm not sure when I'll be ready to start following written crochet patterns. In July, which was also the month of Barbie, I made a second June vest. 
This one was specifically made for the Barbie movies, so you can tell I prioritize the pinks a lot. But it's my favorite color anyway, so it doesn't really matter. To be honest, I kind of hated the stripes at the beginning because it looked weird and it wasn't very flattering on me. But like, now that I'm looking at it again, it's kind of a vibe. I don't hate it that much. And I'm also gonna add the ribbing for this one. And I think that will really balance out the look of this vest. It's also a little cropped for me, so I think having that extra ribbing will give it some nice length to make a better fitted top. In August, I participated in another test knit, and this is the Possum Pullover by Holly. I knitted this in cotton, so it's really breathable and it's great. This is my first round yoke that I've knitted for myself. I have knitted a round yoke before, I think like two years ago when I was test knitting another version of this sweater. But this is one that I have made for myself. And I really like the fit of this. It fits really well and I think it's really comfortable. The only thing is the part at the armpit is a bit tight so I can't really lift my hands up. And I have this fear that when I lift it up, it will like rip. So I don't wear this out that much. It also comes with a pet face duplicate stitching but I chose not to do it because it looks really weird and I quite like it blank. It leaves it more ambiguous and I think it looks cute. But yeah, I had a lot of fun test knitting this. I actually made a full video where I vlogged my process test knitting this. So you can check it out at the card up here. And then I made these leg warmers in October. Let me put them on. And I have a tutorial for it up on my YouTube channel. I honestly made this just because I thought they were really cute. Um, I live in a tropical country, so there's really no point to me making this because I will never wear it. But the Coquette girlies were on to me. So I made this and I love the colors. This was made with um, Abbey Road Wool to be Wild. It's like a 50% acrylic and 50% wool if I'm not wrong. And this is the color pink mix. I really like how it turned out. And the gradient is really beautiful. So since I live in a tropical climate, I never wear this because my legs start sweating two seconds after putting it on. Which I guess is the point because it does make your legs warm as the name suggests but not very practical in a tropical climate. I'm gonna take this off. Even though I have the aircon on, I'm not gonna start sweating right now. And I also made a mini version! This is for my cat. Uh, my cat is actually right there, she's sleeping. I'm not sure if I can bring her here without making her mad. I'm not sure if you can see her, but she's uh, sitting on my chair here. This is for Shasha. She doesn't like to write very much, which is understandable because she already has that extra layer of insulation. But it still hurts my heart when I put it on and she kicks it off one second later. Right, cat? You don't like this very much? She looks annoyed with me that I just woke her up from her nap. And last but not least, the last thing that I made in 2023 is the Tenane sweater. I think it's pronounced Tenane actually. It's a Bosnian name. This is the Tenane Tenane. I am so sorry if I'm butchering up that name. I'm just gonna say Tenane because I think that's how you pronounce it. Tenane sweater by Kaidri. This was also a test knit for her. This is my last finished project of 2023. This took me an antagonizingly long time for me to finish but I think this is my favorite make of 2023. I adore the shoulder detail. It is so gorgeous. And then there's the folded neckline and the twisted ribbing. And it's also a nice amount of oversized on me, which I love. I found a knitting block for this one, so you'll see the process of how I made it in a few weeks to come. Let me just tell you that knitting twisted ribbing, which is knitting through the back loop by the way, on 3.5 millimeter needles, for this much and this much was a nightmare. I hated every minute of it and I am never doing that ever again. I must admit that the end result is beyond gorgeous though, so I would say my suffering was worth it. One thing I think I could improve on this sweater though is that when I was picking up stitches for the shoulder detail, you can tell that I kind of twisted the stitches here but by the time I came to this point, I was already quite far behind and I was too lazy to unravel it but I thought it added like a nice little touch to this because the mistake is so small but if you are really looking for it then you can find it which I think adds a nice touch that 
I made it with my own hands and it's not perfect but it's mine and that's everything I made in 2023 most of the pieces that I showed in the half year wrap up was either not finished or abandoned. In 2023, I wanted to be more intentional with my pieces. I wanted to make pieces that I would cherish and that was practical enough for me to wear on a daily basis. That's why most of the pieces I showed in the half year wrap up were either not finished or abandoned because I just didn't really like it anymore. Many of the pieces shown here also went through multiple reworks and frogging but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'm glad I took that extra step to go and fix my mistake. I'm so excited for what 2024 brings crafting wise and I can't wait to show you my finished products or process of me making those products. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ya, say bye. Ciao. <laughs> I am so sorry. Go back to sleep. <laughs> bye. Bye!